Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America is split into two volumes. In volume one, part one, he describes his work as an attempt to learn what people may reasonably hope or fear from democratic government. After a geographical overview of North America, he traces the history of the Anglo-Americans, Americans with English roots, in colonial times, then focuses on local government, then on the county and the state, and American judicial power and the federal constitution. In Volume 1, Part 2, Tocqueville discusses political parties, freedom of the press, and freedom to assemble peaceably and form political associations, as well as political candidates, elections, participation in the public sphere, majority rule, restraints on the tyranny of the majority, the role of religion in a democracy, the separation of church and state, and a sober and eloquent discussion of the three races in America, whites, Native Americans, and blacks. In Volume 2, Part 1, Tocqueville examines American philosophical inclinations, ideas about politics and religion, pantheism or the worship of all gods, and human perfectibility, as well as books, literature, and the arts in pragmatic America, as well as the impact of democracy on language. In Volume 2, Part 2, Tocqueville devotes significant space to a discussion of American individualism. Tocqueville introduces one of his most renowned concepts, the doctrine of self-interest well understood. Other topics include the American enjoyment of material well-being and possible consequences of the American preference for industry and commerce. In Volume 2, Part 3, Tocqueville stresses the roles of habits, customs, and norms in a democracy. From servant-master relations, salaries or wages, the American family, women's education, the relationship between equality and good mores, the American understanding of gender equality, American manners or social graces, the notion of honor, the ambition of Americans, and the effects of democracy on military matters. In Volume 2, Part 4, Tocqueville discusses governmental power and its distribution, focusing on the connection between democracy and despotism. He foresees the possibility that the people in a democracy may grow so fond of material well-being and so dependent on a strong central government that they will forfeit independent thought, concluding with an appeal to exercise free will and good judgment as the future of democratic government unfolds.